Hi everyone, it's time for another one of those magnificent and marvelous math lessons with Miss Antonia Bain. Our topic for today is dividing decimals with word problems. Let's begin by looking at our lesson objectives. Today, we will divide decimals up to the thousands place and solve word problems dividing decimals. Let's do a quick review. Three and 48 hundredths divided by one and two tenths. How do we solve that? Hmm. Remember, when we divide by decimals, we are to move the decimal point in our divisor to make that a whole number. Our divisor is one and two tenths. If we move the decimal point one space to the right, that number now becomes 12. But wait, what we do to one, we must do to the other. So we must also move the decimal point in the dividend one space to the right. This is how it looks now. Awesome, now, we can begin to divide. 12 into 34 goes two times. 12 times two is 24. Subtract, so that's four from four, which is zero, and two from three, which is one. Now, let's bring down our eight, and our new number is 108. Let's not forget to put our decimal point in its appropriate place. Now, 12 into 108 is 9, and 12 times 9 is, you guessed it, 108. So when we subtract now, we're left with 0. So our final answer is 2 and 9 tenths. Let's focus more on these division word problems. But to focus on division word problems, we have to identify some of those division keywords. These are words that signify or let us know that we need to divide. Some of these words are per, quotient of, cut up, separated, equal, each, parts, all of these and more signify the operation of division. Let's look at this example. Do you know what that is? Yes, that's a flamingo, the national bird of the Bahamas. The question says, the flamingos walked a distance of 12 and 3200 miles in seven days. How far did they walk each day? First, we must understand this problem. In understanding it, we must read it, circle what we know, and underline the question. We've already read the problem, so let's begin to circle what we know. We know that they walked 12 and 3200 miles, and we know that they did this in that's correct, seven days. So now, in understanding, we need to underline the question. The question here is how far do they walk each day? Once we understand, the next step is to plan. There is a key word in this problem that signifies that we must divide. As we are planning, can you guess that keyword or do you see the keyword in the problem? Yes, that is the word each. Each says that we must divide. Now it's time to solve this problem. So to solve the problem, we must set it up. And here's how it looks when it's set up. Awesome! Now we can begin to divide. 7 into 12 goes once. 7 times 1 is 7. Now we can subtract. 
But before we subtract, we need to rename. Why? Because 7 cannot go into 2. So we need to rename this 1 to a 0 and rename this 2 to a 12. 7 from 12 leaves 5. Bring down our 3 and we now have the number 53. 7 into 53 goes 7 times. 7 times 7 is 49. Now it's time for us to subtract. But to subtract, we have to, you guessed it, rename. Why? Because we cannot take 9 from 3. So we rename the 5 to a 4 and the 3 now becomes 13. Now it's okay for us to subtract. 9 from 13 leaves 4 and 4 from 4 leaves 0. We bring down our 2 and our number is now 42. 7 into 42 goes 6 times. 7 times 6 is 42. When we take away, that leaves us with 0. So our answer is 1 and 76 hundreds. Hmm, but guess what? We're not done yet. We need to check. And in checking, we must do the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication. So let's set it up. 1 and 76 hundredths multiplied now by 7. That should bring us back to 12 and 32 hundredths if we are correct. Let's see. 7 times 6 is 42. Regroup. 7 times 7 is 49 plus 4 is 53. Regroup. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 5 is 12. Let's not forget our decimal point. In order to place it correctly, we must identify the amount of places behind the decimal point in the factors given to us. There are only two digits behind the decimal point in our factors, so that means in my product, there must be only two digits behind my decimal point. So that means that the answer, 1 and 76 hundredths is correct. They walk that amount of miles each day. Do you think you're ready to try one on your own already? Let's see. I'll read the problem for you. Raymond has 6 and 75 hundredths kilograms of coffee. He wants to place it in 0 and 25 hundredths kilogram bags. How many bags does he need? Remember, to solve this problem, you're going to use the UPSC method. Understand, plan, solve, and check. You remember what to do, right? I know. Pause the video, and when you're done, we'll go through the answers. If you're ready now, let's solve. This problem was a division problem. Let's set it up so that we know how we must divide. Remember, when we are dividing by decimals, we need our divisor to be a whole number. It makes it easier that way. So in order to get 25 hundredths as a whole number, I need to move my decimal point two spaces to the right. And when I do that, I get the number 25. But I must remember that what I do to my divisor, I must also do to my dividend. And so I must move the decimal point in the dividend also two spaces to the right. When I do that, I'm now dividing 25 by 675. And when I divide, I should get the answer 125. He needs 125 bags. If you got that answer, give yourself a round of applause. You got it, you got it, 
you got it going on. Now, let's do a quick recap. It seems like you've got this division thing down pat. We talked about there being numerous keywords that indicate that we must divide. In our word problems, we have keywords such as separated, each, cut up, and many more. All of these words signify or represent the operation of division. We know that we must use the UPSC method to solve our word problems. We must understand them, plan, we must solve, and we must check. Don't forget that check. That's one of the most important steps. Also, we talked about dividing decimals. When dividing decimals by a decimal, we must remember to move the decimal point in the divisor to create a whole number. But we cannot forget that what we do to the divisor, we must also do to the dividend. That's the only way it's going to be even. If you've got that, then you have become a decimal master. You are ready to divide by any decimal you see. So thank you for making this math lesson another magnificent and marvelous one. This math lesson was created by Miss Antonia Bain.